Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what's on my July and August TBR. For this TBR, I did choose seven books that I am hoping to tackle and they are mainly fantasy books and let's just jump into the first one, which is Have a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This one is a historical fantasy romance set in Regency England. This one on Goodreads is described as Bridgerton meeting Howl's Moving Castle, so I like both of those, so I am interested to see how it compares to that. We're following Theodora, who has been cursed by a fairy. She feels no fear or embarrassment, so she is quite prone to scandal. When the London season begins, she draws the attention of the least liked man in society, Lord Elias. So Theodora finds herself in a strange courtship with Elias and also being embroiled in fairy affairs. To be fair, I haven't really heard much about this book around, but I am looking forward to it nonetheless. Next up on my list is a fantasy horror book, and this is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I was mostly intrigued by the cover of this one, and it doesn't hurt that it is a fantasy standalone. This one is a quest type fantasy book and we're following the youngest of three daughters, Mara, who is on a journey to save her sisters from an abusive prince. Mara seeks help from a grave witch and she is then told to complete three impossible tasks and along the way she meets a group of friends that will help her save her family and also save the kingdom. This one sounds like it will have found family and magical moments and I am interested to see how I like this author's writing. Okay, next up on my TBR is a huge one. It's a little bit heavy to put up, but it is Rhythm of War by Brennan Sanderson. This is book four in the Stormlight Archive series. And if you have not yet heard of this series, what are you waiting for? Go pick up the first one, which is The Way of Kings. I am super excited to continue on with the series with our characters after the end of book three, where a lot of things went down. If you don't know what the series is about, we're set on the world of Roshar where the landscape is brutal with its weather, war, and politics. There was an ancient order known as the Knights Radiant that fell centuries ago and the only thing remaining from the Knights Radiant is shard blades and shard plates which allows men a new way to wage their wars. So this book is giant. It's bigger than my head. <laughs> it has 1200 pages in this one so it's another giant installment but I am very excited to get back to our characters journeys including Shalon, Dalinar, Kaladin, Adolin, and so many more characters and I'm very very interested to see where this book will then take us. I also hope that none of my favorite characters will be in too much pain in this installment, but let's see what happens. While researching for this TBR, I did come across some cozy fantasy books that I'm quite interested in, and I did pick Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Emily Fawcett to be on my TBR. This one I've been hearing quite a lot about, and I really love the cover here. I'm assuming with cozy fantasy is going to be quite character driven and not so much plot driven, which I don't mind, but I hope I do like, I guess, a slower paced fantasy. In this book, we're following a Cambridge professor, Emily Wilde, who travels up to a northern village to study the fairy folklore up there. However, Emily isn't really good with the whole people thing, and when she gets to the village, she has no intention of really befriending the townsfolk. But what do you know, her academic rival is also in the village and he might be muddling with her research. I am most interested to see how the research side of the fairies will go and I hope there's like little entries of the fey folk and maybe like flora fauna type of stuff. I know that I will love the fey that show up because fey is actually one of my favorite fantasy creatures to read about. Next, I chose a STEM-based romance to read, which is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. This is the third book in the Companion series. The first two books, The Love Hypothesis and Love in the Brain, I did enjoy those too, but I do hope in Love Theoretically that there is something else than just academic rivals to lovers. But let's see what happens. In this one, we're following Elsie, who is a physics professor and hoping to land tenure. But in the meantime, in order to make ends meet, she offers services to be a fake girlfriend. Then Jack, who is an experimental physicist, shows up. Meanwhile, Elsie is a theoretical physicist. I don't know the exact difference between those two, but hopefully there's some explanation in the book. And these two are arrivals, and Jack might just get in the way of 
Elsie's dream job at MIT. So this one is another STEM romance and with previous Ali Hazelwood books, again, I did enjoy them but I hope that there is something new in this one. But ultimately, I do hope I enjoy it. Next, I have a book that has been sitting on my shelf for quite some time and I've been meaning to read it but it's only now that I'm getting around to it. It's Roll of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo. This is book two in the King of Scars duology. So this is like the third series set in the Grishaverse world. This duology focuses on Nikolai, Zoya, and Mina after the events of Shadow and Bone as well as the Six of Crows duology. Mainly in book one, we see all the characters recovering from the effects of a war and we also see Nikolai grappling with a darker side of himself and he might need help from the others to control this new magic that's growing within him. I really did like book one. It wasn't the best book I've ever read. I felt like the pacing was quite slow, although the characters did shine through with showing their tenacity and bravery. In Rule of Wolves, I'm hoping to see more storylines, of course, wrap up because this is the second book in the duology, but I hope that we won't get too much muddling of too many plot lines happening because that was happening a bit in King of Scars as well. It just felt a little bit too much was going on and that we see all our characters happy and healthy by the end of this book. Last but not least is a reread and this is A Gathering of Shadows by B.E. Schwab. This is book two in the Shades of Magic trilogy and I recently did read the first book again, A Darker Shade of Magic. In this book series, there are four parallel worlds that are connected through the city of London. And there are rare magicians known as Antari who can jump between these worlds. In the first book, we are following Kel, who is an Antari from Red London, and he acts as an ambassador to all the other worlds. And one day, his smuggler enthusiast hobby ends up with him running into Lila Bard, who is a pickpocket and a girl who really has a sense of adventure. Surprise circumstances causes Kel to bring along Lila to journey throughout all the worlds, resulting in huge adventures. I would say the Shades of Magic trilogy is one of those beginner adult fantasy series that you could get into. And while I reread the first book, it was like a blast from the past for me. I love seeing all the characters again with Kel, Lila, and Holland, and also Rai. There are great villains that you love to hate. There is great action scenes as well as magical mysteries. I am definitely looking forward to see how I like my reread of Gathering of Shadows. Those were all the books I am hoping to read for this TBR and comment down below what you are hoping to read next month. And feel free to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.